For more information on my programs, please visit masajadi.com. That's M A S S A J A D Y.com. Hello, this is Masajadi. Welcome to my podcast, uh, Exponential Intelligence. Uh, with my guest here is uh, Johan uh, Ilgefritz, if that's correct. Is that correct, Johan? Perfect. Thank you, Mas. Perfect. Okay, I just want to make sure. Um, and, you know, we, Johan is an amazing story of, you know, stepping into that death and then coming out of it. So we're going to uh, we're gonna ask him some experiential, say, death patterns uh, that he's had and how he came out of it. He, he's got an amazing story. And then what he learned out of it and what he's sharing to the world through his uh, uh, radio show, uh, which is called the UK Health Radio, which has actually grown quite a, quite exponentially, if I could say, uh, in a very short time. So uh, welcome, Johan. Um, right off the bat, let's, and I have some notes prepared. Um, I'd like to hear your incredible journey, Johan, on how you had terminal cancer uh, and then you came back to full health. So we'll just jump right in as we always do. Um, uh, go ahead, share your story with us. And, and in between, I might interject with from what I see uh, as well from, from a different level. Okay? First of all, thank you very much for having me on your podcast, Mas. It's, uh, it's a great honor. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a very big fan of yours. I've seen your work, and um, it's amazing. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks. Um, yeah, my, my journey started uh, uh, in 2011, actually. Um, I, was, uh, I was a fashion photographer for 20 odd years. When, wow, okay. And then in, in February of, of 2011, um, I first had a heart attack. Uh, and then in June, I, s- I said to my wife, I said to her, I've got to go to the doctor because there's I'm not getting better. I'm not feeling better after the heart attack. You know, everybody said to me, "Take two, three months, and you should be, you know, on your on your way." But it, it wasn't happening. Right. So um, in June, I went back to the doctors, and um, that's when when I actually got the, the first diagnosis um, that I had cancer, and that was, um, yeah, that was that was quite a shock. I must admit, it was. Um, it's a it puts you into a turmoil that I've never actually experienced before. It's, mm-hmm. it's, um, it's, uh, I, I always explain it as, as being in a tumble dryer. It's basically because it's feelings and emotions and, and fears and everything just thrown into one space um, and you have to deal with it. Um, right. I, I, at that point, um, I immediately started radiotherapy. Uh, I did two sets of radiotherapies, all in all. Um, so can you explain what radiotherapy is? And let's just step back a bit. So, you know, when you're in that tumble dryer, would you say that what's important to you and what's not important to you really shows up? Uh, if that makes sense to you in your life, you start to categorize what's important for you, what's not important for you, what's real for you. Does that make sense to you? That most definitely Yes, um, it it sort of puts a, a sort of different perspective um, on life and on things. Things that were always important become absolutely nothing, and um, you so you 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 are forced to prioritize very quickly. And um, yes, I was once asked actually um, in a in an interview in a radio interview whether whether I am grateful to cancer. Mm-hmm. And at that point, I still had cancer, so it was a really hard answer. But I could now actually say I am, because it put me on on a different path in my life. Um, it, right, and it 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 puts so much into perspective. So yes, definitely, it it definitely played a very big part in 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 what journey I took after that. Yes. Mm-hmm. This is very similar to what people go through through the work that I do, and that's why I bring it up, is that 
it's literally you don't have to have cancer to prioritize what's important in your life you just naturally start to connect because that prioritization to you it's like okay i'm dying and then i have to prioritize but in reality you know that 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 news that you get instantly like connects you to your higher self or if you want to call it your spirit and then as it does you wake up really quick and go wait this isn't mine this isn't mine i don't need this uh, and you see things from a very different perspective. I call it a detox process. You, you call it like an instant awakening. Uh, again, guys, you don't have to have cancers or anything like that uh, for you to 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 realize say, your highest purpose. So, uh, and then radio frequency or radio therapy. What is that about? It's just uh, the normal radio therapy um, that. Okay. Um, that is allocated to to cancer cancer patients. Um, the, I think I think the um, the important part during the radiotherapy was I I I had the feeling of of not being part of the process. I, I had I had no duty. I had to be there for the actual therapy, and that was literally all. Nobody asked me to do anything. There was nothing special right. that I had to do or prepare for or read up about or look at or anything. So, and, and I have to admit that really, really worried me the whole time. You know, it was, um, I, kept on, I, kept, I kept on asking the doctors as well, but is there anything I can do? And they said, really, you know, come to the, just be there when, when, when we scheduled and, um, We'll do the therapies and everything will be okay. That's basically the feedback I got. Um, after so during, I'm sorry. Um, so during the therapy, you lay down or sit down and just hang out. Does that make sense? Is that, correct. I'm just trying to paint a clear picture. Okay. Yeah, so how three long days, would the therapies three, last? The, about three, three quarters of an hour to an hour. Okay. Um, quite a f every like every week or sometimes every two weeks uh, I went so each one was about um, 10 therapies 10 sittings if I could call it that right um, actually very indescript not, not much happening etc you know so it's um, uh, in October of 2011, um, after the, the the therapies, I was actually given um, the all clear, mm. cancer free. But that feeling wow. that I explained to you before about you know that feeling about not um, not being part of the process, that feeling stayed with me. Mm -hmm. But you know what it's like when when people. Uh, when things get better, um, life goes on. Right. And it did, right. as usual. Right. Without, without any changes that is actually happen. And then, um, actually, during my first post-cancer um, checkup, that was in um, end of February, beginning of March of the following year, 2012, um, I was actually told that the cancer had returned with a vengeance and um, I was given a life in expectancy of about 12 months. Okay. And that was a very profound day in my life actually because unlike the first time I was told I had cancer with the turmoil and everything, it was totally different that day. Um, for the first time in my life, I actually made a conscious decision right there in the office as the oncologist was speaking with me and telling me that what had happened yes. and that it, with the tumors were back um, seven all in all. Um, wow. It was, it was I, that conscious decision, decision was not to die. And it was crystal clear. There was no turmoil. There was no noise there were, it was just I knew I had to do my share I knew how to I had to start looking I had to become part of the process 
because I, I thought, well, nobody is going to fight for my life the way I am. And that, um, as I said, it was actually a very profound day in my life um, where everything actually changed for me in my life. <laughs> So, uh, beautiful sense of clarity. It's almost like, um, if you don't mind me explaining it from, say, my point of view, it's almost a sense of love or an embrace that came through you, if that makes sense to you. Um, like you were really physically in your body. I think in the past you've always been, say, outside of your body or kind of disconnected from, from, from the world. And then you had that cancer. It kind of displaced you a bit more. Uh, and then when you heard the news again, it's like, wait a second, I'm not going to be disconnected anymore. Uh, and then something or someone that perhaps loving, uh, you know, like maybe a grandmother feel or whatever, just like pull you and it's like, hey, wake up. Does that make sense? And then you wake up and it's that, that beautiful sense of clarity. It's like, this is you. This is the possible you that you could live in physical form if you wake up and you embrace that. Does that make sense to you or no? Yes, most definitely. It, it's um, it, it 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 really was. It was quite a, a new experience for me as well. I'd always see that. Um, I'd always been. I'd always gone through life quite easy as a as a photographer. It's it's hard work, but it's it's joyful. You know, you're always amongst people, and it's um, uh, so it was. Yeah, it was really, it was an awakening. It was definitely my, my uh, wake-up call that uh, I was 46 at the, at the time. So it, I, I was, I, well, I Still was young, young so, you know, I just thought, right. I just really thought to myself, no, it, it's not going to happen at the moment. It, it's, I've, I, I, have, I have a lot left in me. It's not, it's not going to happen now. Wonderful. So I, I from realized that, that go ahead. So you realized it was actually um, it, uh, the, the thought in my in my head was actually okay. So the first option that was given to you didn't work. So go and find right. another option. Well, it, you only need one other option to work. You know, so there might be ten right. or twenty or thirty out there. You find the one that works for you, so, and that was that was the thought process behind the whole. Okay, so so what did you do different, say, the second time uh, around at a physical level? Or what did you start doing different? Uh, obviously, you had an awakening, but... Well, physically, I literally um, started looking for, for the other alternatives. And... Uh, where do you go? There where everybody says you shouldn't go. I went to the internet and I started searching for um, alternative treatments. Just every, anything and everything I could find and anything I could, I could um, lay my hands on, actually. Uh, what followed were quite a few quite dark months and I, I always joke and like, literally thousands of pieces of printed paper flying around the house. <laughs> uh, but I printed out and um, wow. well, I found an image and printed out and, and read and, and categorized and just trying to, to find a, that one thing, that one alternative, that one um, thing that was going to, that one other option, basically. And okay. uh, it happened. It was two o'clock in the morning, actually. Um, I had another one of my, my sleepless nights. At that stage, uh, I wasn't well anymore. Um, just to give you an idea, it took, it took me um, later on that day, it took me 20 minutes to walk up two flights of stairs. Wow. But it was two o'clock in the morning, oh. and I read a I read a little line in the internet that said cancer cannot survive in an oxygenated alkaline cellular environment. And when mm, I okay. read it, I knew that was my lifeline. Then I grabbed onto it with both hands. <laughs> I really did. Um, 
I actually, I, I, I woke my wife, as I said, it was two in the morning, and I said to her, I, I think I've found a way not to die. And it wow. was, um, it, it was a piece um, by a, um, it was a piece about a, um, a German biochemist by the name of Dr. Warburg, who had actually won a Nobel Prize in medicine for that discovery in 1931. And I, I, I said to Rafaela, I said to her, um, how, how come I have never, ever heard of this? You know, how, how can it be that I've never heard of this? And um, so that was, yes, that was, that, that was my light bulb. I knew, I knew in instinctively, I knew that that was Beautiful. going to save my life. Yeah. And literally that morning, literally later that morning, um, we started researching it. And we started looking into it. And it, it, it panned out to be um, that about nutrition. It panned out to be that nutrition was the thing that, that I could alkaline my body through. At that stage, I... I didn't know anything about it. And I, as we read, we thought it was only nutrition. Now, further down the line in this journey, of course, we know that there are breathing exercises and all kinds of other things that you can help like, um, your soul. Right. But, but that, first, that first initial thing was the, um, was the nutrition. And at, as I said, at that stage, I was about seven months into my allotted 12, if I could, say, could call it that. Um, so I literally, be, I, I went from, there was no time for a gradual easing into it. So I literally became a, a vegetarian overnight. And, um, as, and literally, as we learned, as we researched every day, we implemented it the same day or, right that evening or however we, you know, we started, changed our whole lifestyle completely, literally overnight. And, um, and as I said, and that was that was through something that I never imagined uh, would ever help me beat cancer. You know, so. so, so some of the specifics for the audience, like what did you do? Uh, obviously, diet was a huge part. Um, so, can you? So, non I mean, not non alkaline, but high alkaline type diet. Is that what you're saying? Correct. Yes. Including water, um, obviously, which is a big component. Yes. Yeah. At that stage, we 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 didn't even know about alkaline water. You know, we were um, we were just reading about coffee. That you know, um, one espresso actually acidifies your body by three hundred percent. Oh, one espresso you know, is one espresso. acidifies your body. Yes, it's coffee. Is, is really bad for you. Teen is bad for you. Um, so the, those are the things wow. you learn quickly. Um, stop drinking. I better stop drinking um, coffee. Holy shit. <laughs> uh, double, get rid of those triple and double espressos. My goodness. <laughs> I don't I, I I know it was to, that bad. Yeah. One of, one of the hardest, one of the hardest things um, to give up. That and cheese, finally enough I really battled with cheese um, the um, uh, never been a very big drinker like alcohol really so that wasn't really a problem um, but the cheese and, uh, and and coffee was the actually the last two things that I then in the end actually uh, stopped doing so yeah it was just uh, literally what we did is we went into the internet we we typed in alkaline chart, food chart. There, there are hundreds of them in the internet. We looked at a few of them that we didn't understand. And as we got down one that was, that was just a PDF with, from red to green, and what was red was, was acidic and green was alkaline. And, and you know, in between, we printed that out, put it on the kitchen, um, on, the, um, on the fridge in the kitchen, and just literally started cooking and preparing like that, literally like actually to, to newborn babies, you can almost say, you know, learning to, to eat from scratch again. You know, so. And then, of course, doing the research, um, 
about about needs about um, um, the milk and all these kind of things as well yeah. So as a general, if you had to give advice to, say, the audience listening, um, what kind of foods would you stay away from uh, and what kind of foods would you gravitate if you're trying to clean yourself out um, from an alkaline-type diet? Okay. Um, basically, every, everything, everything green is very alkaline. So... Um, we, oh. We're really talking spinach, wheatgrass, courgette, fantastic. Um, it's it's our latest. It's a, I call it the forgotten vegetable. Hardly ever know if anybody knows um, what a parsnip. What is it called? Is. Um, oh, parsnip. water parsnips. Yeah. Oh, and I mean, I'll have to try. That. Absolutely delicious. You know, so um, kale, aubergines, uh, cauliflower. Um, uh, raw tomatoes, there are a few right, tricky, right. There, are, there are, for example, um, tomatoes cooked are very acidic, but raw tomatoes are very alkaline. So okay. you've got to be careful. Potatoes um, are very good. They, they especially um, baked potatoes in the skin, um, they, give a, they have a very high degree of iodine, which vegans like myself now, um, I don't think I mentioned that before. I'm an alkaline vegan now. Okay. Um, need, you know. So, um, right. For protein, for all kinds of things, you know. So, um, I mean, av avocados. Av uh, one av avocado has more protein in it than a porter steak. Wow. And actually, all green vegetables are, are filled with protein. You know? uh, all green vegetables are filled with calcium. There's... Um, I mean, that's where that's where the cows get their calcium from. That's in the milk course, is from what they eat. So, vegetables, um, true, correct. And and yeah. iron as well. Iron is very important um, as well. And all green vegetables are, are packed with, with iron. Wonderful. Wow. So the the, uh, the as I said, I think the best for, for anybody listening, the best would be just to, to download one of those alkaline charts and just uh, follow them because it's, it's really important. So, so how many years after, say, you started all this, you got on, you know, obviously you recovered from cancer. Uh, and then, so what made you go from like a fashion photographer into well, awakening the, uh, the, the world? Right with your radio, uh, or through radio shows. Um, yeah, it, it it was through. It, well, first of all, it took me two and a half years to get rid of my cancer. That's pretty quick. So it, it's not a quick fix. Well, yeah, it's, it's, well, uh, um, it's been, well, I mean, in the broad spectrum of things, it's pretty fast, although two and a half years is a long time, but you, you, yeah. Okay. Um, but it's, um, the reason why I actually wanted to create, I wanted to create a platform. I wanted to prevent other people from going through what I went through in those six, seven months well, um, of despair, I could almost call it, because I was getting weaker and weaker and feeling worse and worse, and I was just trying to find a way back into life, basically. And I yes. wanted to create a platform where people could, could come and find information, but not, but not just one-sided information, all the options. And as many Beautiful. options as we could put together into one place. And that was basically the birth of, of UK Health Radio. It was, okay. uh, it was the birth of the idea. The actual implementation of everything took a bit longer. But not, to be very honest, six weeks after I had the idea, we launched UK Health Radio on the wonkiest website wow. you'd ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Don't was, worry, I started like that was, as well. <laughs> I, I, yeah, it, it really, it, it, 
it was off air more than on air and but it were and it, um i i always, i always joke i i strive for perfection but i don't wait around for it right i get the thing i get beautiful it going, thing. and i needed to get um and i i actually during um during my recovery uh, i i wanted to men- i want to mention this about six weeks after i changed my diet i had a, a surge of energy that felt like a tsunami for me i i, I wow. joke i always say it was probably nothing more than a two foot swell for most people but for me it <laughs> felt like i was very on a tsunami it really did and that just gave me that 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 confidence and that whatever to i realized that whatever you're doing your hand it's working so keep on and that just gave me the inspiration to keep on and um and research it even more and to to go in deeper um as i said two and a half years down the line um I was cancer free but before that we actually started UK health ready before that I still had cancer when we started and I actually used UK health radio I used the information we gathered for myself as well and one of the people that I had um had made contact with during my recovery was a person by the name of Robert Spell um in the USA he's a homeopath um okay. he he had a big pun I I was not go ahead and he he has a he has a radio show called the Robert Scott Bell show he's been doing this for 20 years um, so and Robert Scarsdale Robert Scott Bell Scott okay got it yeah and I actually wrote to him and Robert answered me um and he helped me with with a lot of things and when when i had this idea for radio i um i i wrote to him and i said to him robert i've got this idea what do you think do you think it's viable do you think i could do this here in europe and he said to me johan i will give you my show and you can use it however you wish so that that was my, that was my first step i had the idea um for a radio and the idea actually for radio i didn't know which platform to use i'd i'd always found radio a very personal medium or like a podcast it's personal you know it's 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 not like television that that's it's a very personal medium and 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 i and i have to say this because it, it actually sounds like funny but it was a very um big part of my decision to actually choose radio was um in germany where i was living at the time um we had a i was living in hamburg and the main radio station there was called radio hamburg and they had a jingle that translated it works better in german but translated it <laughs> it says radio goes in your ear and the message stays in your head ah that's cute and this really got me and i thought okay so that's what i need i need a radio to get the message out to the people and for them to concentrate and for that message to stay in their head and that's why i chose or in their heart oh beautiful yeah. so ab- about six weeks as i said six weeks after i i said to rafael to my wife i said to her, we're going to do this radio thing we actually launched radio we are uh, uk host radio with robert's show because i had one show luckily it was a daily show and we just aired it 24 hours a day just okay. to be able to air it. and then i started i started on my search looking for first my, my my main priority at that stage was of course cancer so i started looking for individuals anyway i i didn't i didn't care even though the radio was called uk health radio i didn't care whatever they were in the uk or in japan or in the state or wherever and that's how that's how i actually put it up i started looking for individuals that weren't um radio presenters but they were health professionals and then spoke with them and convinced them to 
to start doing the radio shows for us. And then as we grew and as we progressed, we actually, we now, it's still, we have a few presenters that are also radio presenters, which are fantastic. But most of our presenters are health professionals that we then train as radio presenters. But right. most and foremost, they are health professionals in whichever fields they work in. And from what and I'm today, reading from your, um, it's 24 seven, which is quite amazing because that's a lot of content uh, and it spans the globe. Uh, topics include general health, digestion, back pain, allergies, skincare, um, men's health, mental health. Uh, it keeps going on and on. Uh, quite a, uh, and it's all 100% independent. Wonderful. Correct. Yes, we went very from very that impressive. from that very humble. Uh, we went from that very humble beginning to with one one presenter, one show. Today we have twenty eight presenters doing wow. thirty three shows. There are a few presenters that do more than one show. For uh, uh, for example, um, our diabetes uh, presenter has another uh, foot health show as well, where he concentrates only on the feet. So um, right. yeah, we on we on a twenty four seven, and we we we. We have the, the most in-depth information on on most health topics available at the moment. But yes, I'm very, I'm actually, I'm very proud of it. I have to. Admit. I would be too. Uh, just tapping into it, it's really pure. You, you know, you come from a pure heart or pure intent. In fact, all of your presenters uh, really want to get say to the true knowledge uh, out there. Uh, if that makes sense to you. whether uh, and you present all aspects of information, not just what's, what say that presenter is about, but then, you know, a, a well-rounded aspect. Does that make sense to you? Not just like their point of view or like your point of view uh, about the subject. So, so the listeners can literally will make their own diagnosis or uh, thought process about it, uh, which is really important for you. Cause what one, it, one, it, what, might work for somebody isn't a catch-all for somebody else so that's why if you present the whole gamut of what could be then they get to pick and choose what's right for them they do they would naturally attract that so uh, very nice very uh, excellent way of doing it yeah yes it's um uk health radio we don't, don't doesn't try to prioritize between mainstream health or natural health or, or any we exactly we add exactly this quality information, true, true information, um, and we add them side by side with the intention not to provoke, just to inform. So right. we, we um, UK Health Radio actually has a very has a very distinct um, purpose, and that is to to inform and animate people to take responsibility for their own health. Now, this doesn't right. mean taking the book into your own hands. All it means right. is to become part of the process of attaining and or keeping your health freedom. That's basically what it is. Of course. Well, you have to become responsible, um, right, for your own life, not just your health, but your own life. And, um, you know, if, even if you're going to a doctor, you have to eat properly, exercise properly, do whatever else properly on the outside, not just like take the medications or whatever. Uh, that the doctor provides and then also my component obviously is at a spirit level or you know your core level programming is like what are we doing to get rid of the programs that come from you know family values family structure you know patterns or her hereditary patterns of ill health you know what are we doing to eliminate that as well you know and then combining the two um, that's where we get say fantastic results like yourself actually Yes, it's been it's um, it, it's been such an incredible journey for me. I basically went from believing in absolutely nothing um, to where I am today. Where I always say, you are what you eat, what your food eats, what it's sprayed with, what it's genetically tested with, etc. Of course, but all that is only fifty percent of it. The other fifty percent is what you. And for me, exactly. that 
that experience has been unbelievable. It's it's like a new world that has opened to me. It really it is, is a new world. A, a yes. world I have no idea of its, of its existence, and that's been that's that's been personally, I think, the most in, the most amazing part of all this. And that's what we've we've implemented in UK Health Area as well. So it's not only you know the bare facts; it's it's what you think. It's the spiritual aspect of well-being. It's it's everything everything incorporated into one because we are all everything. Right. Exactly. You have to um, uh, focus in, like you said, on everything, not just like one piece. You know, people go, well, if I go to the doctor, that's all I have to do. I don't have to change the rest of my life. But, you know, if you really want to become healthy, like really healthy, without getting, you know, the same disease or different diseases, you know, that keep rotating or the same relationship issues or finance problems, you know, it's a 360 degrees of awareness that you have to, say, eliminate, uh, if that makes sense to you. So, uh, and by the way, it's uh, his internet site is UK healthradio.com uh, which I would suggest that you guys listen to um, so where do you see UKHealthRadio.com going from here you know if you had the perfect scenario what would you like to see that turn into I, I, um, I, I have I have quite a vivid imagination actually. and I um, <laughs> I I want UK Health Radio to be a health household name in every dwelling on this planet mm. that is my that is my goal that is what what I'm striving for um, we, we we have a, a, a magazine it's called health triangle magazine as well because as you mentioned before not not, not everything that works for one works for the other some people like to read right. it we've created this magazine which which isn't sterile like most health magazines. It's a lifestyle magazine. It's got, got the feel of it. It's got the look of it, and it's um, it's really quite it's really quite unique as it is because it's it's got this incredible um, same as the radio, this diverse information with all the different um, options available. Um, so it's that that was one of the things. Um, it's it's only digital at the moment. I don't know. Maybe down the line we'll print it. But um, international is important. Being worldwide, the radio is is, is um, internet radio, so it's worldwide. So it's it's. I've always I've always thought not local but international. So that's been cool. that is my um, what what we've just started as well is um, is called Wiki Health. Um, it's on the website as well. I was just going to ask it's, you that. Yeah. Correct. It's, I was going to just ask you about WikiHealth. So tell us about that. Yeah. We, well, WikiHealth is, is exactly what, it, what the name says. It's a Wikipedia of health that we are actually busy building up. Um, and as the radio, um, I thought, why hold it back and keep all the information until we have almost everything before we put it online? So we just put it online. And and we we're building it up. And once again, it's 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 the same structure that we have for the radio. So you'll have um, you'll have the, um, a condition with its symptoms, and then we give you six different options, ranging from light therapy all the way through to biochemical um, medicine and treatments for that matter, and Japanese and Chinese and herbalism and everything in between Ayurveda um, um, treatments as well so wonderful it's, it's I, sometimes I wonder why why I ever started that project because it really is a lot of work and very time consuming but it it's amazing the information in there is amazing and we, we're planning on on, on publishing um, a new condition every week for the next 200 weeks. And then we'll really have wow. an, an incredible platform with incredible information in it. That's a solid database. And That's the, beautiful. 
Yes. Yeah, it, it really is. It's uh, every anything you can you can wish any information about anything you can, you know if it's on there already um, you'll find it with as I said with the symptoms with the options um, you can even leave um, it, it has a, a a a message section where you can leave comments if you wish um, ask other people interact with other people ask them. If they've used that, 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 that work or however, as you mentioned, nothing, nothing works. Not, there's no universal cure for right. anything or anybody. Some things right. work for different people. Right. Um, I think it actually work well with what we do, with what I do as well, you know, is, is, is uh, again, clear out the foundation or the familiar programming and then say that your knowledge you know, rests on top of that, and people can have like fantastic turnarounds in uh, any aspect of the, your life. But for you know, for what you're concentrating in is on the health. So, um, if that makes sense to you, um, what does the medical community think about you? If if you have any feedback on that, yeah, they, um, I think they were quite skeptical in the beginning. Um, of course they would be. <laughs> because most, most of them know my story. But most, most of them now realize that we are really in the business of information. We're not right. there to, to play anybody down or to build anybody up. We just bring the best quality, true information available to us we put out there in in two ways and this is very important i ask two things of my presenters and that's that it's done with integrity and that it's done in a positive manner because in those six seven months when i was searching for a way out everything was just dark and doom and gloom and everything so so no matter what topic we we tackle and some of them are are really life-threatening topics we always do it with, in a positive manner. You know, you can you can achieve so much by 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 helping people be positive instead of the opposite. Of course, <laughs> um, there's a there's some study that says that you get actually like almost thirty percent smarter by just smiling at people, uh, and and coming from a framework of you know happiness rather than doom and gloom. So right there in itself. So if you maintain that all day long, and not just by well, you could even force it, but you know, getting rid of the say the internal frequencies that distort you to be the doom and gloom uh, and moving away from uh, you know, the medical community or whatever else. Uh, I'm not saying move away from the medical community, but the negativity that's based uh, around medical community or any other community, I guess, uh, and coming into the trueness of, of what health means. That makes sense too. Yeah. So um, I think that's where we're uh, going forward. You know, I, I met you at the best you, uh, and it was quite amazing. You know, you as a person, um, you know, we just connected almost like instantly. There was that deeper connection. Um, which I don't get quite a bit, quite a lot of, uh, which is really cool. Um, it, it was really really nice, and and then I worked on you for a little bit as well, uh, and then you went on stage. Can you tell us a little about what happened? Because I heard a little bit of it, but I was always intrigued. So, and that's why it came up to mind. So, so what happened when you went on stage? Uh, and I can kind of explain, um, I guess, the underlying science behind it, because it's not just you know. Uh, frou frou stuff, I guess you could call it, uh, but actual science behind it. So, can you tell us that story? Yes. Um, I, I actually had two speaking engagements. Uh, the best you was two days, Friday and Saturday. And uh, um, I've, I've speaking in, in front of people have never has never been easy for me. I've learned to do it, and I embrace it now because I enjoy it. Somehow the, the the passion takes over, but uh, I, I've always been of the photographic mindset behind the scenes. And the first, the Friday I spoke, um, I was actually very disappointed with with myself 
because I felt that uh, it was but why it wasn't a good it wasn't a good talk. I I, I wasn't at my best uh, or anything. And then on the Saturday morning, um, we had a session, Mars, where where you treated me, and then uh, at four o'clock on the Saturday afternoon. I had my second talk and it was it was it was like I was another person and this is not coming from me this is from people that saw both talks said that there was a person on the Friday and a person on the Saturday were like two <laughs> wow. different people <laughs> wow um actually you know what I see it is like you actually stepped into yourself and owned it from what I see, so you were not another person, you were the real you, if that makes sense to you, uh, a full embodiment of you. And you know, if you can get to that level, like you did, Johan, and it'll, it, uh, and it'll stay with you um, and actually get stronger, but that's how you, you know, really transform people to heal, uh, if that makes sense to you, because that's like what true, that's what true giving is. Uh, you know, so as you speak, you help shift people, and you go, "Wow, that this is the real me," and I can embrace myself just like Johan is. He really is embracing himself and having that deep, strong, say, inner connection with your higher self. But once you do that, you would get attracted to, you know, like UK Health Radio to find out information or whatever else to make it say a reality, a physical reality, if that makes sense to you. So I, to me, that's where like true healing starts. And I think for you, uh, especially even now, especially well after I worked on you, uh, I see that uh, you know you'll even grow stronger, and it almost gets magical on some of the transformations you'll hear from um, uh, um, you know people who do whatever that you suggest or whatever that your um, you know health providers suggest. Does that make sense to you? Um, and, and that's what we're really here on earth, right? That interconnectedness where you go, hey, it's okay to be you, but let's make it the best you, so to speak. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm loving that you're embracing yourself at a much, much deeper level. I think your wife might kind of see you in a different light as well. Um, and your kid, uh, which helps them. Yeah. She's actually one of my biggest critics in a positive manner. And she just said to me, I, I, you were transformed. And it wasn't... That's so beautiful. Term. It was, um, you know, after the Friday's talk, everybody sort of gathered their stuff and scuffled off after my, my talk. On Saturday afternoon, I stood there for an hour and 15 minutes speaking with people who just <laughs> came to the front. They, they actually asked me to leave the auditorium because the person that, that was oh. to follow was ready. <laughs> So we stood outside and people were just like all around me and just asking me questions. And it was, yeah. It was, I think they just wanted to be around you was, because you're the real you and you're really embracing it. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Uh, I'm so happy for you, my friend. Um, well, wonderful. Thanks for, uh, uh, if there's any other things that you want to cover uh, as we end. Uh, otherwise, it's been I a just, fantastic I, interview. Gone. I just wanted to. Um, I had just wanted to thank you actually for the privilege of being at your event on the last evening, the one with Tim Wheater. Oh, Tim Wheater! Um, yes, you were. It was wasn't it a fantastic event? It was. It was mine. It was. It was life changing for me. It really was. I've the the two the two meditation sessions there. Um, I've never never ever have I been that deep or gone that deep um, thank you it was as I said it, oh. it was um, it was fantastic so for those people who don't know so we did uh, a meditation with Tim Weeder and he's quite popular I guess in the UK as far as um, music and instrumentation goes uh, quite beautiful music so he played the musical instruments uh, and it's a very interesting range of musical instruments uh, that he plays so while he was doing that, I was generating frequencies for the audience, and they were two 45-minute sessions, but um, the 45 minutes would end, uh, and nobody left. Nobody, nobody, they were just like in a, it's a beautiful euphoric 
literally frozen state. Uh, it was 45 minutes that I think probably the first time probably lasted maybe it felt like 15 minutes. And then after, mm -hmm. did you notice that nobody just like moved? They were just like, I just want to stay here. You know, it's like I, we had to shake them, you know, to to kind of reset. And then the 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 second 45 minutes, we even got a chance to go deeper. Uh, and like you said, nobody wanted to leave. They just wanted just, just to hang out. So even for like half an hour, we had to kick people out uh, after that event. But we'll do more and more events where we can integrate people, um, you know, like Tim Weider and me, or even you. Uh, you can be talking about whatever that you'll be talking about, uh, and I could just hang out in the background. So say say that you're talking about cancer, right? Uh, your life story. Uh, and maybe that's just something we can throw around next time we're in the UK. Uh, I can ge generate frequencies of, say, creating, you know, a resolution for cancer for those individuals. So they get it from both sides. One, the underlying frequencies, and then two, the conscious, say, level. Wow. Just thinking about that actually really, really excites me. So maybe we could talk uh, next time I'm in the UK. You know, we could do something together where I can just sit in the background uh, you know, maybe share my story for just a few minutes, but then, you know, you would do your presentation. I'll sit in the background and just uh, send out frequencies as you speak. Uh, see how mm, impactful that is for people. Uh, it'd be a great, uh, it'll be a great test, I think. So it would be an honor for me to, to be part of that. My honor as well. Thank you. Thank you. Well, wonderful, Johan. Thank you for being on my show. Uh, we're going to be promoting this uh, on on our side as well. Uh, so thank you. Uh, say hi to your lovely wife and your kids. I, I didn't get a chance to meet your kids, uh, but I'm sure they're fantastic individuals. So uh, take care from my end. Take care. Thank you very much, Mars. It, it's been a pleasure, and um, I look forward to seeing you soon, hopefully. Wonderful. You can always come to the U.S., by the way. So <laughs> we'll show you around. All right. Thank you very much. I'll definitely right. take you up. Take on care. That. You take care, my friend. Bye bye. Thank. Bye bye. For more information on my programs, please visit masajadi dot com. That's M A S S A J A D Y dot com. <laughs>